Alrighty, so um, what I'm hoping to teach today is an unfamiliar text skill. So this is a basic skill. This doesn't respond to um, the text as much or look at how to explain language features or anything like that. It's just about chunking a text. So it's about dividing a text in a way that makes um, your responses better, ensures that you address the text as a whole, and also enables you to um, understand the text a little bit better. Uh, or at least break it down into something that's a little bit more manageable, particularly if unfamiliar text can seem kind of overwhelming to you. So I've called it chunking, which I was told by my 13 students sounded a little bit gross, but that's what I've got into the habit of calling it. So I talk about breaking a text into chunks. So for this one, I'm going to focus on looking at a poem, um, and then I'm going to make another video that looks at a fiction text, just so that these are a little bit shorter um, as videos. So it refers to dividing the text into different sections or focus points. It's a way of structuring your response. It's a way of breaking down the text as I spoke of. We have a habit with unfamiliar text of diving straight in, finding the language feature, and then trying to build the response from there. Whereas what I found is more successful is looking at the text, looking at all those small things, the title, the glossed words, the summary, the question, breaking the text into chunks, looking at what it's about, and then going from the language from there. Because ultimately what gets us the better grades is our understanding of the ideas. And sometimes it's hard to see the ideas because we're so busy finding the language features. So this way I find gives a better focus on what the text is about, um, which hopefully links to ideas. So the reason I also suggest this, besides structuring your response, it allows you to look at the text as a whole. But if you're aiming for achieved, it's just breaking down the text, making it more manageable, finding the bits you understand and going from there. If you're one of those students that's on the achieved or merit boundary, it's really helpful um, because looking at the text as a whole and combining parts of the text is what gets you into merit. And if you are aiming for excellence, um, you need to address aspects from the entire text and include a range of evidence. So it forces you to do that. So as you can see, these are the criteria that are involved um, at each level. So it goes from level one, two in the middle, and then three on the end there. These are all taken from the M6 criteria. M5 has a slightly lesser degree of this. Um, and obviously, you then need to have it if you're looking at excellence. So these are just taken from part of what we call the assessment schedule, which is what you're graded by or based on. So if you want to find them, just Google English uh, assessment schedules. It'll take you to the NZQA English subject page, subject resources. Uh, and if you scroll down, you'll find them. And then you can scroll down and find 1.3. All right, so these are just the bits that are relevant um, to chunking. So as you can see, if you're looking at level one, you need to look at how aspects work together. Um, this was talking about another text, a boy's experience, but don't worry about that. Um, it looks about how you have a range of appropriate examples and they might be or some are combined. So if you look at how examples combine, if you look at how parts of the text build, you're doing that. At level two, showing a connection of ideas and techniques, um, the structure is a technique. You discuss the features of the text, which can be the structure or the building of it, and you have a range of evidence throughout the response. Um, and this forces you to get a range of evidence because you're taking it from different parts of the text, beginning, middle, and end. And if you're looking at level three, you need to have an attempt to trace the development of the ideas, which means you need to have an awareness of the text as a whole and how it builds or changes, which is what this does. So if you're looking at the idea that you might take English all the way through, um, this is going to be really helpful for you. So um, to begin with, just focus on what each paragraph or stanza shows. So I'm going to work with stanzas in a poem today. Poems are easiest. They're already in real clear breaks. Um, fiction can be a little bit harder, but I'll do that in another video. Uh, it's easier to see with the text divides. What you can do is then group like-minded stanzas or paragraphs together. When you get good at this, you'll be able to see the natural divides in a text where it shifts in focus or it builds into something more, or it changes. Um, but to begin with, just look at each paragraph as they come. What is each paragraph or stanza showing me? What's the focus? So this is what does it talk about? What do I learn about? What's the mood? Just anything. It can be a real surface level thing. Here's not where you get your amazing depth and ideas. If you've got them, go for it. Um, but if you're just thinking, God, I don't even understand this text. This is so overwhelming. Go for surface. That's all you need. You'll find that as you do that, as you connect the text, as you find the language features, the depth comes. And if it doesn't, well, a bit of surface will get you achieved anyway. 
Then what you want to do from there, if you're aiming for those higher grades in particular, is look for changes or developments. So the text that they choose will have something. It will either change, so contrast, or it will develop or build. Um, so it will get more exciting, more action-packed, or it will go from being dull to exciting or positive to negative or lively to dead or something <laughs> to that effect, all right? So it's a really positive thing to be able to find these. So I will show you some chunks in action. Um, before I do that, actually, uh, how to use this resource. So what you can do uh, to begin with, I just listen through and see what I'm doing. If you can kind of understand it partway through, just pause it, read the text, come up with your own answers. Uh, I have chosen texts that have appeared in NZQA exams before, so they should be in resource booklets um, on some people providing them, email round, hopefully you can access them. Um, you may want to then read the text and try to do this yourself. Uh, apply it, write a long answer, response using the sentence starters that I give you, apply to other texts that you have. Um, this isn't going to go through answering in any form of detail. I'm going to show you how you take the chunks to formulate an answer, but I'm not going to go through it in detail. I'll hopefully get a chance to do that in another video, but this is just a stepping stone for the early skills. Okay, so um, this is a poem that I've just divided on in half so that it fits bigger and better onto the screen. Um, this is City Skies. It is a New Zealand poem. I do believe it is from the 2015 Level 2 paper. The question is something along the lines of analyze how the writer shows the change in mood or changes the mood from day to night. And then if you look at the description, it literally tells you that it's about the sky um, as it changes from transitions from day to night. OK, so really important to read these little bitties that I've copied over here. Um, they're, they're like a glossed summary at the beginning of every text. Read them because sometimes the texts aren't very clear and it will tell you what it's about literally. So it can make it helpful. So what I would suggest now is that you pause this and then read the poem. If you can't read it very clearly or you don't have a paper copy, uh, each slide will have these stanzas broken down so you can read them a bit clearer. And I will go through each one. So. Time to see what I mean when I talk about chunks. So the first thing to do is start with poems because they're easy anyway. Stanzas are basically chunks. They basically have a have a focus. So a stanza is a fancy word for a verse or a paragraph in poetry, if you weren't aware. So have a read through this. I'm not going to read through poem at all because that's long. What is the focus of it? How would you summarize it? Does it give off a mood or feeling? Could you give it a title? If you were to describe it in five words or less, what would you say about it? So have a think, pause, maybe write something down, and I will show you my answers in a moment. Okay, so um, this is my very surface level basic kind of thing that I've gone through. So what's the focus? I think it starts a book metaphor and it feels magical. That's the focus. That's all it does. That's what it shows me. That's all I need. See? Very surface. Not a trick question. Okay, let's go into the next one. Longer stanza. So pause it, have a think. Um, if you were to give it a summary, a focus, a mood, a feeling, anything, what would it be? So I thought it kind of continued this magical theme. I thought it had a very light feeling. I think because there's swooning and clouds and puffer fish and sheep and blue, um, scattered, tattered, very light sort of ideas. Um, that there was something kind of lively because there were creatures. There were puffer fish and sheep and shepherds and things. So just this very magical, light, lively feeling. That would be what I would describe it as. So hopefully you're seeing something here. <laughs> Okay, then look at this one. What I notice is that there was a change. So this one here, this line is one very small stanza. It is one line on its own. I thought there was a change. It was more angry or negative from there. Um, it was still kind of magical. The idea of a fiery breath made it seem like a dragon to me. Um, but then there's burning and vulnerable and... Um, yeah, and the fact that it's all gone, fires, kind of negative idea. All right, so hopefully what you can see at this point is that it's different if I flick between the two. 
hopefully you can see that this or this is different to this. You can see that, then you're on your way to merit. Okay. So you can see that they're different, hopefully, maybe. All right, let's look at the last one. So thinking about the difference between this one and this one. Okay, so I thought that there was um, a change once again, that there was a slightly darker mood, and I think that comes from references to skeletons and graveyards and tired land, um, which has a kind of negative connotation. Connotation is a word that you need to know if you're at level two in particular, so learn it. Um, and the idea that there's this silhouette and shadows and imagery like that. Um, I thought that when it became night, so when the moon has risen, there is the idea of this commander who watches the skies. I thought that actually seemed quite calm. So I thought it was the change that seemed kind of unruly as opposed to the actual night sky. So maybe the sun falling and seeing the horizon and seeing um, the sun go down and everything like that has that impact, the sunset. The sunset is unruling and fiery and passionate, but then the night's actually quite calm, whereas the day was quite lively, but in a positive and light atmosphere. Okay, so hopefully in a moment you, you will start to piece the method to the madness a little bit more. There is some, I promise. Okay, so we thought about that. Have a think about the poem, maybe go back and read it one more time, go back a little bit and find where it was and pause and have a look. Okay, and I will show you the question and how this builds. So, analyze how the writer creates changes in mood as the day turns to night. So all I've done is I'm just going to copy across the parts um, that I wrote down. So it starts feeling magical on a book metaphor. It goes magical, it feels light, it changes, it seems a bit more sinister, it changes, it seems a bit darker, but then it kind of seems calm and it's still magical. So if I was to look in a very literal sense, by going through and breaking that text down, I've been able to see how the mood changes. If I read that whole poem from scratch, it would probably be harder to look at it as a text as a whole and see that change as much. But by breaking it down, I've made it more accessible. And now you're wondering, how does that work in an answer? Let me show you. So these are just the starters of a point. So if you look at the bits in yellow, initially, later, ultimately. So you might be used to writing acronyms. And I have nothing wrong with acronyms like Pilates and Texas and anything like that that you find helpful to help you write answers this enables you to do the same kind of thing it's just a little bit more straightforward i think if you can remember to put a quote and language feature then this is just as helpful and um, so i've got the keywords in there and this helps me look through initially the writer creates a magical and light feeling of day so i've got to start with what it's like in the mood of the day I would just take quotes from my first or second stanza, probably my second stanza, because it had lots of ideas in it, and I'd go from there. So that magical theme, light feeling, creatures of the sky. Perfect. Whoops. Right. Later, this develops as the sun goes down, and we can note a more negative and sinister mood. That's when I take something from my third or the beginning of my fourth stanza. I've broken it into chunks. I understand where the change happens, so I'll just take an example from the ones I need. If I looked at that first stanza, and there was that book metaphor, and I noticed it, but I didn't quite get what the effect was. There's no point writing about it, all right? I just ignored the first stanza. I didn't get it as much. I got the other ones more. I'm going to focus on what I know, because that makes sense, all right? So don't just go where the language features are. If you can get the language feature, but you can't get the effect, but you know that the second stanza makes sense for some reason, just go with that and find an adjective, and you're better off, all right? Later, this develops. The sun goes down. Sinister mood. I've noticed the change. I talk about the change. I've written develops in this um, bit here, but I could probably just use the word change, which is in the question, which would be better. Ultimately, once night comes, in a calmness returns. And then I've noticed another change in the mood once again. All right, so I'm taking those chunks. I'm addressing three parts of the text. Three is a good number. You'll see I've got four. I've just ignored one of the ones I didn't like. Easy. Take the bits you understand. So um, in the next slide, I'll show you what's missing and how this would build into another response, but I'm not going to actually do it. So um, what this text needs or what this, uh, these starters need, they still need evidence. They still need some reference to language features, diction, structure, anything like that. Syntax, the way they're written, the way that is, um, some of the lines have only one word in them, rhyme scheme, anything like that. 
and they need to explain what that evidence shows. So each one of these points here, initially, later, and ultimately, would still need a language feature, a quote, and some explanation. I've got those bits in yellow on the right here for a reason. So these are what are required to achieve. These bits you would still need to get into more like the merit or excellence. So refer to the author's purpose and consider the effect of the structuring and how this mood change and how this development is important. So you ask yourself, why did the author structure it this way? What changes or develops? What can I learn from this? What messages am I intended to gain or reflect on? What ideas am I meant to get? If you can't get them, um, here's what I would consider below. These are the sort of ideas that I gained, having read through it, having broken that down, having it made more accessible to myself. I was then able to think about um, how there was something quite magic about going from day to night, which is a real simple thing, but it seemed quite magical. The fact that it's also a city and it seems beautiful is kind of interesting as well. Um, I would think about why the change in day is so hectic, but then it seems calm at night. Um, I consider the beauty of nature or the beauty that surrounds us, especially if they are in the city, and how it seems kind of childlike. And I would think about that. Any of those aspects would be good to work on and build as an idea. Okay, so these would be ideas or thoughts or aspects that I could consider to get more into merit or excellence. So that's just one poem broken into chunks and hopefully gives you a very early indication of how you can use this as something that's helpful. So to summarise, um, you read through a text and you scan it. You look at each paragraph or stanza and think about what it shows. What do I learn? What do I gain? What's it about? Focus, the summary, the mood, the feeling, five words or less, title, what do I get? Okay, if you want, you can group them together. If you don't want to, you can't think of it, that's fine. You just think, how is there a focus? Then you think, how does that focus change? How is it different? Or how does it build? Does it have the same idea or the same focus, but shown in a slightly different, built up way? More action, more excitement, more magic. Then formulate your response by linking these focus sections to the question. So you use the keywords of the question along with initially, later, and ultimately. So I will hopefully go through how to build an answer a little bit more. But um, to begin with, there you go. How does it work? Um, break a text into chunks and you never know. It might just be amazing.